Hello everyone, how is everyone doing? Hope everything is okay with everyone. Um, I have had a lot of delay, what now, six months, uh, since I put up my last tutorial on Perl for Bioinformatics. But without further ado, let's get started. In my previous tutorial, we talked about uh, Perl operators, increment and decrement operators. In this tutorial, we, would, we will talk about the remaining of the variables um, to get ourselves introduced to Perl. Uh, we'll start with uh, arrays and hashes. So array is a way of storing things inside a list. So as you can see here I have the array has a, a symbol at the rate so you declare an array with at the rate and the array name like here I have first array and as you can see here I have a list of things stored inside an array it can be string between single quotes or double quotes and it can be any value in like 5 or 6 uh, for this example I have you know a list of 4 strings by name DNA some sequence R and some sequence and the way to access the elements of the array is by index and for Perl the indexing starts from zero for other programming languages like MATLAB or, or R I'm not sure for R for, but for MATLAB the indexing starts for, from one but for Perl the indexing starts from zero so as you can see here I have four elements inside my array list DNA sequence RNA sequence so the indexing starts from zero so the way to access DNA is by calling dollar first array within the brackets the index zero which gives us or gives back the first element of this array which is DNA and so the DNA would be zero its sequence would be one RNA would be two and AUBC would be three and there are a couple of different ways as there is a famous quotation there is more than one way to do it in Perl so scalar is a function which returns the absolute size of the array which means that instead of returning 3 starting with 0 it returns the absolute size which is 4 because we have 4 lists here so it returns 4 and we are storing that value in size of array variable. Another way of getting the size is by implicitly assigning an array the scalar variable. In this fashion you get the size of the array. So we are just getting the size of an array in different ways and printing them. And in the next section being at line 21 we get introduced directly into control structures um, control structures are a way of controlling a block of code between you know to either do repetitive functions or to loop through uh, a, a list or, or or hash or things like that so here I am uh, declaring a constru control structure for excuse me control structure for which is looping through the list of the array and printing each of its element so I start with zero because Perl's uh, way of starting or Perl counts the list starting with zero so I am starting with for each of my dollar i equals to zero and until and unless i is less than size of an array print and just for your understanding I'm printing the index uh, in the first iteration it would be zero and print first element of the array which is first array in the square brackets to zero and printing a couple of in the lines as you can see if you have noticed I am uh, printing I'm using a print statement to print a list of things so either you can print 
the value, the first element of the array, and then use a comma to print the next uh, statement. You can either print statements by separating with comma, or you can remove the comma and include the whole thing in quotes, double quotes, and you can print it together. As I have said before, there are more than one way to do things in Pro, which is nice. Um, so, um, in the first iteration, it will just print the index 0 and prints the first element, which is DNA. In the second iteration, it will print um, ATGC, you know, the sequence. In the third iteration, it will print RNA, and in the fourth iteration, it will print GC. Now, if you notice, I have mentioned the size of array variable which stores 4. So, when it, when it is done with 3, uh, here you can see that I'm incrementing plus plus is the increment operator as we have discussed in the previous tutorial. So, when it reaches 4, there isn't 4th element here, right? 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 3. There is no 4th element. So, Paul spits out an error saying that I can't find fourth element inside the array, which is technically a fifth element. Don't get confused. Once you get used to this, it gets wired in your brain and you won't have problem in the future. So let's just, um, we have gone through this part of the code, you know, understanding line by line what each line does. Uh, I will explain um, this part of the code later. So let's just comment that. And uh, we will execute when we execute, uh, you know, whatever the print statements are here, those get compiled and run. So let's just go there and all right. So, as you have seen here, um, the first print statement is just printing the first element of the array which is DNA and the DNA is printed here. The next print statement is the size of the array, the absolute size of the array, which would be 4 as I've explained because the scalar function returns 4. And by the way, if you want to learn more about functions, uh, I would please suggest everyone to go to perl.perl.org and there is an extensive and neat description for each and every function. You can just type the function name here and you would get a complete detailed description about the function. So scalar, the expression forces to be interpre interpreted in scalar context and becomes the value. And so the other other way of getting back to the program, another way of getting the size of an array is by implicitly assigning an array to the scalar variable so it will store the size of the array in the scalar context because we are you now assigning an array. Um, there is also uh, a different way of mentioning the size as you can see uh, it becomes you know kind of writing, writing two more lines of code because I need to first find out the size assign it to the variable and then use that use this variable inside size of an array. Instead of going through all these loop, uh, loops and hoop -la -la, you can just use dollar, the comment sign, and the array name. As you can see, this is, this is a special SQL which, with the array name, which actually gives the Perl's array size, which is 3, including starting from 0. So, once we execute this, and you can see we don't see any error because we use that special array size variable, uh, which is dollar followed by the comment symbol and the array name, it will return 3. So, once in the first iteration it is 0, 0 is less than or equal to 3, that is true. So it will execute these two blocks of statements, and then the iterates uh, the increment operators increases that to one, 
1 is less than or equal to 2, that's true. So it will print 2 here in the dollar i. First array of, sorry, 0 plus 1 is 1, so it is 1 here in dollar i. And first array is first array of 1, which is 0 and 1, 0 and 1, which is ATGC. So as you can see here clearly, the scalar of array using scalar function is 4, Perl's index size is 3. Another way of getting, which we mentioned implicitly by assigning array to the scalar variable, you get 4. So in the first iteration, 0 is DNA, 1 is this one, 2 is RNA, and 3 is AUPC. So as you can see clearly, it is just um, uh, a linear representation of uh, things which we call as list in an ordered fashion. So what if I have, um, let's say, uh, something else here, uh, like five, number five. So the reason why I'm putting five here is to, um, to explain the difference between array and a hash why is hash more sensible way of storing uh, things um, as you can see here DNA is this sequence so is 5 this sequence or is is 5 I mean what is 5 it's just there so it's 5 is just after the sequence so when you execute this so DNA is that sequence, so what is 5? Five? 5 is just printing there. So that's when we come into the next uh, way of storing values in Perl. It's called hash and it's um, identified by the percentage symbol. So when you say percentage followed by any name, it's a way of storing um, particular data in a key value fashion which means that you can assign a value to a particular key and later in the program you can access the value by calling the key it's more like um, indexing in database or, or, or sorry uh, IDs database IDs where you select an ID and you get a value for that ID so the way of declaring um, hash is similar way to declaring um, array where you have an open bracket but you use this um, equals to and greater than symbol which increases the readability and it's also uh, um, defined ways of declaring hashes is to assign a value uh, to DNA I can also not only assign strings but also assign a numerical value uh, let's say you know, like, like number of seats is 2. Um, as you can see, I don't have a comma in the last statement. Um, and I also suggest people to um, declare each key value pair on a separate line so that it increases readability. And so the way to access the value of the uh, uh, the way to access the DNA sequence is to call between the curly braces the actual value of the key. Sorry, the actual key name. So to call an array, you use square brackets or to access the elements of an array use square brackets but to access the elements of a hash you use, you use curly braces this is Perl's way of differentiating things so that you you know the creators of Perl intended it to be different uh, symbols for different data structures or data storage um, measurements measures sorry um, so print dollar sequence within the curly braces the key will map to the value 
and it will print the sequence name. Also, um, as soon as I print this, I can print the next statement and I want to print a new line. So this is another way of printing statements, you know, using comma value. Um, for loop is similar to for each loop. Um, the only difference being uh, for each loop loops through a list and you can actually assign uh, each element in the list to a variable and so in this example I use for each loop for each my dollar key keys of percentage sequence or which means keys of a hash keys is again a function which will return um, keys of a hash so when I say for each my dollar key it loops to all the keys of hash and within each iteration it will assign the key like DNA RNA DNA RNA or number of seeks to the variable dollar key and the way to access the value of the key is dollar sequence within the curly braces dollar key so when we execute this uh, program as you can see the key of a hash um, is number of six the value is two number of six the value is two DNA is you know DNA sequence RNA is the, uh, the RNA sequence you may ask you have declared DNA RNA and number of six but the program has printed number of six DNA and RNA there is no particular order in which um, you know there is no guarantee that it will loop uh, through the keys in order but um, there is a function called sort which will actually sort the values and hopefully it will print um, it will sort the keys in, in 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 order so it sorted for me in alphabetical order D N and R so that's for the tutorial um, I will post this um, script on github you can download it play with it and leave any questions or comments um, I will if you have any doubts or comments or questions please leave them on in the comment section and I will try to you know clarify any of the doubts and any of your suggestions like what you want uh, to see me do or explain for you to you know start coding in Pro. Thank you very much and have a nice day. I'll be back with the next tutorial in which we will uh, discuss the the most important aspect for the bioinformatics which is regular expressions and we will right away start writing some meaningful code you know where we convert DNA to RNA, RNA to DNA, convert DNA sequence to amino acids and so on and so forth. So that's it for me. Have a nice day. Uh, happy coding.